uh, townhouse fires. Work with the city of Chicago. Um, they had some townhouses, identical townhouses, 20 of them, in pretty good shape that uh, they wanted to burn. So we started each of the fires in the sofa that you see, that nice blue sofa there in the front that was in the front living room. In the rear on the first floor, we had a dinette set, again, kitchen cabinets, more fuel there. Uh, upstairs, we had the bedrooms furnished. Uh, we had two doors that were open to bedrooms, one the bedroom in the rear at the top of the stairs and the front bedroom uh, that you see the red arrow to. And then the other bedroom had the door closed all the time uh, up on the front. So each one of these, we went through and all we did was change ventilation and then we hit the fire from the outside. So in this first case, uh, everything's closed. We see the fire developing. We talk about the fire dynamics again. You know, the fire plume's coming up. The ceiling jet is going across the ceiling. You see the smoke spreading into the lower uh, rear right corner there. That's the kitchen and the dining room. You see smoke coming up the stairs. The top middle image is the uh, open bedroom at the bedroom at the top of the stairs. And then the top right image is the image that goes with the front bedroom. So right now, there's no openings to the exterior. There's no bedroom windows open. Uh, the front door's not open. We see that the flames are starting to roll the ceiling in the first floor in the living room. You see we have smoke floor to ceiling in the bedrooms at a little over three minutes. Notice that what do you see from the outside? Because the heat is built up inside, the pressure's built it up inside. For a little while there, you saw smoke push around the edge of the door, and now you see nothing. Right, the pressure dropped. As Steve said, the smoke, the gases contracted. The officer opens the door crack to take a peek. What happens? Fresh air goes in low, hot gas comes out high. You see what the flames are doing, right? The heat release rate is increasing again. Sorry. Now, because this, we let this drop pretty well and the, uh, the fire was so fuel rich, this is going to take another five minutes or so before it actually leans out enough to, uh, to get flames out the door and out the window. And we're going to get a little leakage at the window as well. But you see the fire's growing and responding. Conditions aren't getting any better in the house. We're actually starting to burn out the sofa, which was the uh, original item of origin. So now the fire's spreading to other chairs in the room. We're starting to get some leakage at the picture window. Again, we're still floor to ceiling throughout the rest of the house in terms of uh, smoke and oxygen depleted smoke. And the only reason we're waiting for this one is so this will be your baseline and you can see the differences as we start to open up uh, more, of the, more of the house on the, next, on the subsequent tests. So we're starting to get a little more leakage out of the, uh, the living room picture window. And now we're going to start to see flames appearing at the top of the door and then followed by some flames out the edge of the window. and then we're going to hit it with a hose stream. So now the fire is starting to transition to flash over. So it took a long time. Because in effect, we had door control in place um, because the amount of fuel in there and, and the limited ventilation. So their initial hose stream, now they're introducing it in the house and starting to knock the fire down. So you see that we uh, burned the sofa out completely. That's where we started the fire. Did these chairs, were they on fire back in the kitchen? No, they pyrolyzed. Oh, I like that. You guys are good. Uh, they pyrolyzed, right? They cooked off some fuel, but there was no oxygen back there for them to burn. If we want to get those chairs on fire, what do we need to do? Send a truck company around the rear and break the kitchen windows. Um, no burning upstairs in the bedroom. We're not going to spend too much time on looking at the data here. Just this is the living room. This is the kitchen, the hallway, and the bedroom. 
The fire goes up at the ceiling, we're 1,500 degrees. One foot above the floor, we're over 400 degrees. Untenable there. Uh, the temperatures all drop down below 400 degrees. The front door is open, the temperatures jump back up to 1,500 degrees at the ceiling, 400 degrees at the floor until they increase a little further. We hit it with the line, drop them down. Similar pattern up and down throughout the house. The only difference is the magnitude. So in the front bedroom, we had temperatures at the ceiling at 600 degrees and uh, one foot above the floor, only about 100 degrees. <clears throat> From temperature uh, perspective, laying on the floor, laying on the bed, getting maybe survivable. Uh, but gas constant, what do people typically die of in their home first? Right, smoke inhalation, toxic gas throughout that house very quickly. So now in this case, same kind of deal. We light the fire in the same place. Uh, we're going to leave the door closed. And now when we open the front door, we're going to follow that very quickly with a firefighter with a pike pole taking out that front window. And watch how fast things transition. Again, the fire's building up. You see how rapidly smoke is filling the bedrooms upstairs. So we're a minute 30 after a small flaming ignition on the sofa. Has anybody even called you yet? Not likely. Smoke down to the floor at the uh, bedroom that's at the top of the stairs. Three minutes. Watch this frame here. We have such a pressure differential that what, what's going to happen here is the fire is trying to draw air. The gases are shrinking upstairs so they're cooling off and they, the pressure differential between the basement and the first floor is enough that it pulled the basement door open in front of our camera. So that pop that you saw was the basement door whipping in front of our camera. So the front door is open. It's four, th four minutes, 30 seconds. They vented the window. You see how rapidly that transition is occurring because this is such a fuel-rich environment. It really wants a lot of air. Before, we were waiting for minutes before it transitioned to flash over. How long did it take here? About 30 seconds. Again, we're going to hit it from the outside. You see that we had more burning closer to the window this time. <clears throat> Again, up and down to 1,500 to 400. It goes down, break, open the door, break the windows. It rapidly increases up. Notice that the HS, the hose stream, where we're hitting it with the hose stream, we're not seeing any increase in the bedrooms or any increase, any push of heat or anything upstairs or other places in the house. <clears throat> this one's my favorite, so I'm going to show you just the one view first so you do the size up. In this case, this bedroom window is open. The front bedroom window is open. So now we're going to, we made sure the fire's burning. We've closed the front door. And again, you know where the fire is. We lit, we lit the fire on the sofa. Again, a small flaming ignition. At a minute 30, you're going to start to see some wisps of smoke coming out of that upstairs window. As the fire grows downstairs, the amount of smoke coming out that window, the top of the chimney, if you will, is going to increase. The temperature of the smoke is going to increase. The volume and the velocity of the smoke is going to increase. So at its peak, we're going to have smoke that's blowing out of that window horizontally almost three to four feet before it starts to go up. Notice what's happening at the doorway, right? High temperature in the living room, pressure building up in the doorway, forcing smoke around the edges of the door. And now watch it starting to puff, and then it stops, right? So the fire is losing energy downstairs. Now watch what happens up at the upper window. It's like somebody threw a switch. It's actually sucking back in the window right now. Watch when the first vent is made. Completes the flow path, right? We have bi-directional flow at the front door. Hot gas is out high. Lower pressure, fresh air down low, and a unidirectional vent uh, at the top of the bedroom. About 80 seconds after they open that front door, the living room transitions to flashover. So I mean, this is again one of those cases, as Steve indicated, sort of that invitation period. We got there, all we saw was smoke. We thought we had a chance to make a grab. We sent a crew in there ahead of the line. Where's your crew now? They either got to go out windows or, or run down through that fire. Again, knocking it down from the outside. I'm going to let you see the whole thing again, so now you can watch the, uh, the smoke move upstairs. And what you're actually going to see as you watch this is, 
as it starts to darken down in the lower level, it's going to be picking up oxygen upstairs. The flame is going to move up the stairs, and then you'll see a glow in flames for a short period of time in the front bedroom before everything darkens down. So again, it, I think you know, the general public doesn't realize all the time how rapidly smoke spreads through a house when doors are open. Or how rapidly this hazard builds. So you see the flames coming up in the bedroom. That's sort of when the push out the front window is at its peak. Now the flames are gone. The fire's darkening down throughout the structure. And we're going to see the smoke stop when it's actually pulling back in the window at this point. Opens the front door, you see that tunneling effect that was mentioned before, that fresh air, that low, that gravity current being pulled in, that oxygen adding to the hot fuel and increasing the heat release rate. And then within that 80 second time period, transitioning the living room to flash over. Again, fuel in the kitchen, was it on fire? Nope, there's no oxygen back there. High pressure area with no oxygen. Uh, we can't push the fire with a hose line and we can't get it to burn because there's no oxygen back there. Again, we have the up and down like we had before. Once again, notice when the hose stream goes in the door, even in the flow path here, all we see upstairs in that bedroom, that upper bedroom, is a decrease. We never see a spike of heat going up the stairs. This is at the bedroom, the bedroom window. We have temperatures up to 600 degrees going out of, out of the window. Then they drop down. We open the door. They pick up again to about 500 degrees. Here's the velocity. The velocity out the window is about 12 miles per hour down here. And it's a little hard to see, but uh, when the door, before we open the door, the velocity actually goes negative because it's sucking back in the window trying to get to the fire. Now we're going to switch gears and go to some single family homes, wood frame construction burns that were done with the Spartanburg Fire Department and ISF, ISFSI. So we're looking at size up. Size up is very, very important. So here they have a wood frame structure about 1,000 square feet. We have the fire officer walking around with a video camera and a thermal imaging camera that are literally taped together and seeing what he can see in his 360. So the idea here is nothing's opened up. He's got smoke coming out of various locations in the house. They're going to go to the hot spot, vent the window, and introduce water in that window. So it's pretty clear to him here you know, where that, that energy is, uh, is localized. So they're going to break the window. And ideally, we'd flow water right away. But in this case, we're going to let it sit for a little bit so we can get a sense from the thermal imaging camera that the energy level is increasing uh, in that room of origin as air gets in there. And then we're going to hit it with some water. Unfortunately, a very pathetic stream of water initially due to some hose kinks. But you'll see even at that, it has a tremendous impact. So what's the impact there? Well, the first thing we're going to look at is just the impact of venting the window. So when we vent the window, you see that the temperatures in the living room go up a little bit. Uh, temperatures in the rear bedroom back here aren't really affected. That, that's open there. The kitchen goes up a little bit. That's the next room adjacent to the fire room. And here we have this front bedroom with a closed door adjacent to the fire room. And conditions there are still tenable. Then we apply water through the window. And what happens in the front door in the front room, it goes from 700 degrees to 100 degrees near the ceiling, 200 degrees to 70 degrees at the floor. The rear bedroom, temperatures don't change much. Again, now's the time to vent those windows and let cool air in or vent the front door, let some cool air in. The front bedroom has stayed tenable the whole time in terms of gas concentration and temperature. Now we're going to look at a different case. In this case, same kind of house, same kind of furniture, except we're going to have the, the front door open at different periods of time here. So you have the interior view, same scenario as we had in the previous fire. Again, hot gas layer is going to build up. The fire is going to darken down a little bit. You're going to start to see smoke pushing on the outside of the house. So look at the outside view. Think about size up. You know, what you're looking at from the outside versus what the conditions might be inside.
This furniture uh, was burning extremely fast. This was brand new furniture. Um, we were worried the fuel what literally wasn't going to last long enough. So what you're seeing, this glow here, is actually from a 500 watt halogen light in the corner. The fire's really darkened down pretty well. Uh, these are old homes, but in the fire rooms and adjacent rooms, we installed new windows, thermal pane windows. Uh, these homes are built in the 1930s or so. So now we have the initial opening of the door that helps the fire pick up. You see that it's starting to self-vent out of one of the windows. Vinyl frame, basically it's burning around the frame. We had hoped the door would stay open. That didn't work that time, so they're going to go back and, uh, and open the door again and, and use a tool to keep it open. After they find the tool, yes. Uh, this bedroom here is the bedroom that's closed. Uh, so we're going to be checking the tenability in that bedroom. So now, interestingly enough, the heat flux in that bedroom is going up because we have the flames sweeping the porch in front of the window, uh, adding some heat in there. Now they darken it down from the outside. So here's what it looks like, the impact of opening the front door. Uh, we certainly increased the temperatures in the living room from 1,100 degrees to 1,400 degrees. Temperatures in the kitchen increase. Rear bedroom doesn't change too much. The middle bedroom goes up a little bit. And then the front bedroom, you see the temperatures are increasing from 80 to 90 Fahrenheit. Uh, and we still have plenty of oxygen, uh, no CO or CO2 to speak of, but the heat flux is going up a little bit. Uh, we also had thermal couples on the doorknob, because sometimes you want people you know, to be touching the doorknob and all that sort of thing. So uh, the doorknob in the room went from 100 degrees Fahrenheit to 200 degrees Fahrenheit. And on the fire side, it went from 700 F to 1200 F. Impact of water through the front door, dropping the temperatures throughout the space as, as you've seen before. And again, the front bedroom, even though we had fire rolled in the porch and everything, uh, remains tenable. Show you one more scenario here. Again, size up, so you've got smoke showing. Where's the fire? The thermal imaging camera is going to help you here. And it looks like you got some fire in the rear, or where's the fire? Fire's in the basement. This size up was a little slower maybe than we had hoped, but they were being very thorough. Um, I'll just play it till they sort of get around the corner here. <coughs> Oh, yeah. So the 360, again, extremely important to, to see what you have. I'm going to skip this for right now, but if you want a copy of this presentation, um, send me an email with your mailing address or give me a card and we'll make DVDs. We just sort of finished it this morning, getting all the, the best, latest stuff included, So, uh, but we'll get copies out to you. Again. We attacked it from the rear on the level of the fire, so we weren't working over the fire, and it dropped temperatures significantly. We also had a simulated firefighter in there where we, we were looking at turnout gear temperatures and things like that. Um, and now I'm going to, for the last segment, I'm going to turn it over to Derek, who's going to tell you how we put this in practice.